and you all know what this is. Stomach. It won't be that simple, but you know that's a star. So what is this that's coming in? Esophagus. Okay, the esophagus. And what he'll do sometimes is he'll take a balled up piece of paper towel and like stick it right here. What is that that he's representing? The angular notch. notch. Yes, the angular notch. Okay. And then what is he sometimes puts a pen right here where the esophagus comes in. What is that? The cardiac sphincter. Okay. That's one of the reasons why it's hard for a horse to vomit. Okay. So what he could do, he could tag that and he could say what's another reason other than the cardiac um, sphincter that it's hard for a horse to vomit. So what are the other two reasons we have? So the oblique angle of the esophagus as well as Muscle. Yeah, it's the striation, like one quarter, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, though. Look that up. One quarter striated, one quarter knot, or something like that. Um, and then, this one's cut a little off, but he can put, like, a tag right here, or he can shove something in here. What is this up here? Yes. Okay. Now... We've got the two portions. What is the line that divides it? Okay, and so usually he'll just put a couple pins along there and say, what is this? Now, what portion is right here? Glandular. Is this glandular or non? Non. Non. Okay, so where the esophagus comes in is the non-glandular. The glandular is at the bottom, so the darker part is typically the glandular, but it's best just to make sure where the esophagus is, because that'll help you a little better, because some of them are oddly colored. And then, what does this lead out into? Okay, and right before that you have what, the pylorus? And what did you have the pyloric sphincter? And there's probably some that are cut. I can actually cut it down. It's got two parts, a cranial and a caudal. He probably won't say be specific on that, just in case. You know, there's the two. I'm not going to cut it. How do you tell which is cranial? You'll have to orient yourself. So, you got to look at the angle that the esophagus comes in. Don't mind me. Give me a minute. This is not a good stomach for this part. So, which direction is your duodenum going in? Caudally. Caudally. So, you, the one that's closer to the duodenum is going to be your caudal, and the one that's closer... <laughs> to the other side is going to be your cranial. <laughs> okay, so let's see. What is this? Yeah. So this is pretty much all the small intestines, and this whole thing. What is this? The large intestine. So this part right here is the large colon. So the ascending colon is the large colon, and the transverse and the descending colon is the small colon. Okay, does that make sense? Because sometimes he uses those words and you know, don't know what he's talking about. And just like before, on the ruminants and stuff, he can tug your jejunal arteries, arcades, and the basal recti that come off of there. Okay. Um, he doesn't really do too much more with the small intestine, but depends on what he's got to work with. Okay. So, when he throws out the large intestine, sometimes he throws it out and it's like this, and you got to orient yourself. So, in order to do that, it's the best thing to find first. The cecum. Yeah. So, you remember the arm? Yeah, I know y'all didn't have Cheney, but we told you at the beginning the arm thing, I think. So what is this portion first? Yes. The apex of the cecum. You have the body, and then what's the other part? Base. The base. What is this right here in between? Cecum. Yes. And sometimes there'll be an open cecum, and you can see a orifice in there and you'll see the cecocolic orifice. So if he, you see something like that, look at where you're at, look at what you're going from and to, and name it appropriately, <laughs> okay? I don't know if anyone's opened it, but if they have, he will likely tag it. He probably won't open it on his own, though. Um, all right, so then with the arm, what do we start with? 
So this is the right ventral. So we're coming from the cecum into the right ventral colon. How many teeny pull out does it have? Four. Four. And you can count them if you need be, but sometimes he'll tag it and say how many teeny pull out. Usually good just to know off the top of your head instead of trying to count them out. But so if he puts a couple pins down this, what is this? Okay. Two teeny coli make up postra, and then these little things in there are sacculations. So he could possibly tag like that and say, what is it? So is it called a sacculation or a hostra? The hostra is this whole thing in between two teeny coli. Sacculations are these little divisions in a hostra. Okay? So one, two, you can't see it, three, and four teeny coli. Okay? And then we come up here. What is this division? Sternal the sternal flexure. And can you see how there's like a slight indention here and you can see that there's a division? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your sternal flexure. If in doubt, call Dayakar over and don't say, are you tagging the flexure or are you tagging the portion of the colon? Come and be like, are you tagging this or are you tagging this? Because I asked him something similar. So the way I worded it the first time, and he was like, I don't know. And he just walked away. <laughs> um, so, because sometimes he'll be a little off to the side, but not often. Um, and then we come into, what is this? Okay, and how many teeny coli? Four. Okay. And how many teeny coli in the seat? Four. Okay. Then, this right here, you see how it turns? What is that? Good. All right, and then we have left dorsal colon, and how many teeny colon? One. Okay. And then this division right here. Okay. And then we go into right dorsal. And how many teeny colon? Three. Three. And then you can see it comes up into a little triangle. What is this? Transverse. Yeah. And then into your descending. Okay. So does the transverse have any saculations or is it just? Mm. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay. So it's not it like. It has teeny coli, so you would assume it probably has hostra, not so much saculations. Okay. I think it probably depends on the horse. What else? How many teeny coli does transverse and descending have? Two. And so, like I said, find your sequin first, go from there. If you're confused, find it, just walk it out. And you can, when you go back, like if you have trouble figuring out, write down what you think, star it, come back when you have like the couple minutes at the end and reorient yourself, okay? I think that's about it for this, but this is important. He'll probably do a couple tags on that. There's so. only three or four of those set out. Yeah. And then the stomach, he'll have a couple on too. And just a question on the stomach. Mm -hmm. What is the actual sac of cecus? Is it outside or inside? It's just in this whole thing right here. <laughs> sometimes okay. he'll put something in there, and sometimes he'll tag it like this, but like with something at like At the front of the it. stomach, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. it's just like that little excess area up here. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. I don't know how to describe it as to outside or inside. I assume inside, technically. But, okay.